What's up, YouTube? We're back with another episode of What the Hell I Doing. This week, we're back with another edition of Champ's Corner. And we're going to do another garden update. I believe this is garden update number three. We are now at May 9th, 2020. These plants have been, uh, well, most of them uh, I started on, I believe, January 28th or around there. That's when I started germinating. So some of these started within five days of that. Some of these are three weeks older. I explained all that before, but um, yeah, this is what I've got. These are my plants for this year. I've already gone over them once. If you haven't uh, seen that video, you should check it out. Um I uh, showed these about, I think, three weeks ago. They've gotten much bigger since then. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty excited. It's still cold outside, though, which sucks. Uh, next weekend is uh, Victoria Day weekend here in Canada, and usually that is the weekend where the golden rule is you can start doing your gardens. You know, uh, the threat of frost is no longer an issue, but uh, this year it's been cold as crap, and... Uh, well, right now, today, it's been snowing on and off. Not, not that it's accumulating, but it's snowed. And that's messed up. So, um, you know, I haven't had these things outside too much yet. So that sucks. But uh, it's supposed to warm up in the next week or two. So I'm going to take advantage of the warmer, sunnier weather. And I'm going to start getting these sun weathered. Because I need to gradually get used to the sun before I can bring them outside permanently. Um, so, so far, I've only had them outside once. Or twice. Uh, last Sunday was a nice warm day. It was 20 degrees Celsius in Canada. That's like, uh, I believe, about 70 or 72 of Fahrenheit. So uh, I brought them outside at the peak sunlight of the day and let them uh, absorb about 40 minutes of, uh, you know, noon sunlight. And then brought them back in. And then a couple days later, I brought them out for some 4.30 in the afternoon sunlight and gave them about an hour's exposure. Basically, what I'm going to do is every time I bring them out, as long as it's Somewhat frequently, I'm going to add 20 minutes to 40 minutes every day and gradually get them up to where they're outside for four, five, six hours at a time uh, because they're going to see about 68 hours of sunlight every day. So they have to get used to sunlight before they can go outside. I've had a fan blowing on them for the last month, so the wind won't be a factor, I don't think. It's been blowing on them pretty well. Um, so... The, the whole idea of the fan is to strengthen the, the stems and everything so that the, they don't get destroyed by the wind. They have some resistance and strength already. Uh, and, the, and the fan blows out them at a good rate. So, you know, they're going to be able to handle a good wind and, and I don't have to worry about them falling apart or, blow, or being damaged or shocked because they're not used to that. All these plants have been exposed to a good amount of wind now. So the only thing they really have to be adjusted to is the sun. And uh, I think they're going to do fine. The other crazy thing is because I started them back in January, virtually I think every single one of these has flowers starting to bud. And, uh, oh, actually, as I'm looking, there's a couple right there that need to come off because uh, you don't want them to, uh, that one's actually hanging down. Huh, sorry guys, as I'm picking buds off here. But, uh, yeah, you don't want them to flower you want them uh, you want to pick those off to encourage the plant to keep growing and you have more bud sites so that's what i've been doing for the last week or two now is i'm uh, cutting them off as i see them um it's starting to get hard though because they're starting to pop up everywhere so that's going to be a bit of a problem but uh luckily i've been on top of it as much as i can because i want to promote growth for probably till about mid-june and then mid-june i'm going to stop and let them grow maybe the start of june we'll see see how out of control things get but as you can see, oh, by the way, subscribe and hit that like. I keep forgetting to mention that, but, uh, you know, a lot of people that watch, I know some of you don't have YouTube accounts, but a lot of you to watch could be subscribing and you're not. It's free to subscribe, so just hit the button, and it's also free to hit the like. So, yeah, this is my biggest plant. This is the uh, Chocolate Maruga Scorpion, and as you can see... It's become a mature plant. It's got nice tight nodes. It's not uh, stretched out or anything. The light's done its job that way. Um, and now she's starting to V off and it's going to start to develop a wide canopy. And uh, when this goes outside, they'll start getting new shoots coming up from all these nodes. And uh, this, this has become a quite a dense plant, I think. And of course, if you saw how they grew last year from the pictures I showed, these will grow to be a few feet tall. Um, they're going to go in the new homes probably around mid-June and then uh, they'll explode probably from there. Um, oh, I do have to say one thing. 
those cheap grow lights I use. Um, I bought them at Costco. They're 19 watts each. They do the job. I mean, look at that. It's got a nice thick stem. You know, it's, it's fairly healthy looking plant. Uh, it's got a good canopy. But one thing I do notice is that light is causing some deformities. Like, look at this one. For whatever reason, this one's got these weird crinkly looking leaves. It's a little under fertilized. They're all getting fertilized, but some of them are still pale. But look at that. It's got these weird crinkly leaves. Um, these ones kind of have weird crinkly leaves too. It's uh, this one here. Some of them got weird curves to them. I noticed that a lot of the, the characters, that the characteristics this light's been doing between last year and this year is a lot of leaves get this weird curve. Like that one there, it's got a big curve. Um, and then once they go outside, all the new growth grows normal. So I'm not really worried. I just want these plants to grow and stay alive while they're inside. And I want them to go outside in a big enough state where they can get mature quickly and get really big. Um, you know, yeah, these leaves are somewhat deformed on some of these plants. But in the end, it won't matter because when they get outside, they're going to grow new leaves and that will take over the plant real quickly. And, uh, you know, the, the job will have been done. So there's another bud there. It's got to come off. So, yeah, it's um, that's one complaint I have about this light. So maybe next year, uh, I don't know if it's because it's the blue and red light, that purple effect that's causing this. I watched videos about this last year, too. Uh, when I was trying to decide what kind of lights to use, because uh, I, people were doing experiments between uh, like T5s and CFLs and the purple lights, and they were growing lettuce, and lettuce grew differently under every one of them. Some it grew tight, some it grew kind of deformed, like some of these leaves you see here, and some it grew nicely. So obviously the those tests are real, you know, missing spectrums of light probably does affect the plant somewhat. But the end result, like, you know, like I said, that looks pretty good. I can't complain. You know, um, once that goes outside, the, the natural sunlight will will promote a lot of new growth. And this, this thing will explode. This will get way taller. And uh, it's going to fill in nicely. And like this one, too. Look at this one. I mean, this one has a little bit of deformity going on in the top leaves. I, I'm only assuming it's the light. It, it makes no sense otherwise. Um but you can see it's getting the dense undergrowth now under there. And, and all that will eventually shoot up into uh, new shoots that will come out and fill out the canopy too. Um, you know, this plant's looking pretty good. It's leaning a bit because I just watered it. It was hungry earlier. Um, but yeah, you see that one's getting big. This one here is a, uh, this is a Levi Leviathan gnarled scorpion, this one. So that one's getting quite big. This one here was my last seed to pop. This one here is the chocolate bootla uh, scorpion and uh, this one had only one leaf when it came out of the seed as a germinated plant it's gotten a little pale because it was getting hungry but like like all the other ones it's recovering now you know it's been fed properly for a couple weeks um, and this one got quite big quite fast surprisingly so I'm happy with that and then we've got this one here this one here is my Trinidad Viper crossed with the purple boot uh, well, purple ghost um, this one's also maturing. If you look at the top here, you've got one side and the other side, it's, it's doing the V thing now. So this is going to start to form its canopy and soon will soon will start shooting shoots, sending shoots off the main stem. And this will form a nice big bush too. And it's getting nice and tall and it's nice and tight too. Like I can't completely complain about the light. Like, you know, the form of these plants is nice and tight. They're not stretched out. They're not starving for light. But they do grow a little bit weird, like those leaves there. This one's curled down. This one's curled down here, which is weird. And this one's kind of curled to the side. It just seems like this light does promote a little bit of weird deformed growth sometimes. And the other thing I have, too, which I'm not going to lie about, I've noticed some of these plants have edema. Um, which, if you look on the underside of the plant, there's like sugar deposits in the leaf. And I think that was because early on I was consistently watering. Uh, maybe a little bit too much. Peppers are supposed to be fairly dry. Um, so what I was doing is every time I noticed that the dirt looked dry, I would top them up. And uh, I think the lack of, lack of fertilizer for the first little bit, which I've been mentioning this video and the last video, I think that contributed to it as well from what I'm reading. 
so I've I've been monitoring the watering a little more carefully now. Now I basically wait for them to start getting just a little bit of softness to the leaves where they're just starting to get dehydrated, and that's when I water them now. Um, and it seems like that solved the problem. All the new growth that's coming out doesn't have edema. So there's a little tip for you if you uh, if you have that problem. It's mostly due to overwatering or you know maybe fertilizer not being there or maybe a little bit of fertilizer shock from starting them on fertilizer. But don't panic. Things always recover. Just keep going, and you'll the new growth will come out and the plant will be fine. Uh, what else I got here that's interesting? I have a uh, this is a reaper. This one here. Uh, you know, it's not as big. The reaper plants are all a bit smaller, but they were also later to grow. But uh, for the most part, this one's got a little bit of deformity. It looks like the leaves got a little dried out because I think I underwatered this one once. Um, but it looks all right. This one here is also a reaper. It's a little more dense. It's getting uh, getting bigger. It's got like, I don't know, one, two, three. It looks about five or six nodes tall, even though it's short. So, you know. It's growing into a nice plant. It's not too deformed. This is also a reaper here. I'm not going to show you all my reapers. I'll show you this one here, though. This one's a little interesting. This one I showed a few weeks ago in the last garden uh, tour. And this is the one that I show you that was already pretty much uh, doing the double V at the top, where it was, uh, you know, splitting and maturing already. For And that's unusual, because at that point, the plant wasn't that old. So... As you can see, you know, it's still got the two heads. That's one side here, and this is the other side here where my two fingers are. So if I pull like that, that's two heads. So this is going to grow up like this and then fill out a big canopy too. Um, this plant's growing very dense. Like, it, it, you probably can't see it on the camera, but if you look through, you know, there's layers, leaves, as well, four or five nodes as well, but it's very tight and it's very dense and bushy. I suspect that when this plant gets outside, it's going to explode with growth and probably get a lot taller and it's going to fill out and probably become quite a pepper bush. But that's one of the best looking reaper plants I have. And none of the reaper ones have exploded with height. This one here is a Leviathan gnarled scorpion. This one's growing weird too. All the leaves are a little bit twisted. I believe that's from the light again. Um, I'm not worried about it. It looks weird now, but once it's outside, I know the natural sunlight will promote normal growth and uh, everything will come out normal and it's trying to bud as well so I don't know if the camera can see that but there's buds in the top there so that's another one that uh, is producing well everything here is budding like crazy now these two here were my two ghost pepper plants um, that I explained last time I got them out of my first one that I took seeds and I forgot to get more seeds so I didn't have many opportunities to continue that line of ghost pepper but I did get two plants um, Last time I showed these, the new leaves were very pale. And they still are, but you can see the new growth that's coming out of the middle is green. Um, so that's what matters. When things go wrong, just try to do the right thing and be patient. Because you'll see things start growing normally, and that's a good sign. So I do have these odd-looking, very pale leaves right now. But, you know, in a couple weeks when it's outside, this thing's going to explode, and those are going to be gone. So it doesn't matter. But the main thing here is that the new growth is green. Uh, and both of these plants are also budding. So that, that's a good sign too. So I'm also taking the buds off of these to promote more growth. So yeah, you see the common theme here. Everything's trying to bud. Everything's become mature. So everything's healthy enough to try to promote budding. So I, I have to think that that's a good thing. Um, this one here, this is, a, I think I showed this one already. But yeah, this one's budding too. If you take a look, I don't know if the camera's going to pick them up, but if you look at those top, the tops there, there, there's buds. This plant was healthy from the start. This one does not have any edema. Not all of them do. Only a couple do. I think three or four have it. So I didn't overwater all the plants. I just overwatered some of them. So there you have it. That's pretty much two or number three of my garden. You can see the plants are getting bigger. They look kind of ugly, some of them, because of de deformed growth. You know, the paleness kind of bothers me, but they're going to be going into soil soon that uh, is full of nutrients, and it's going to be able to feed them for three months. And I, I've seen them grow that before. They will explode. They will darken up. They will look great. I actually have to start working on transplanting these all. I want to put them all in solo cups now. I know it's not a big jump, 
these containers mostly half full. So I know it's not a big jump, but I'm going to promote the roots to get a bit of a bigger root ball. And then around mid-June, the plan is to put them in their final homes and then they'll fill out nicely and hopefully produce some amazing whipping peppers. But as you can see, things have come along quite a bit. And um, despite my complaints about the way some of these things look, I'm pretty happy. All right. Well, we got that out of the way. But before we're done here, we've got to talk about UFC 249. It's a big night tonight. It's been a couple months without sports. It's been two months and two days since the last UFC pay-per-view. And I think next week would be two months since the last fight of, that of any kind happened. So it's been a long time. It's something to look forward to, and I'm pumped about it. So I'm glad UFC 249 is happening tonight. There will also be a fight night on Wednesday night and a fight next Saturday. So I think because the UFC is back, it's time to make a death shot bet. So before we end this broadcast, I want to say thanks to Dana White for bringing the UFC back. We have something to look forward to. I think it's going to be a great night tonight. The card's exciting. There's a lot of good fights on. I'm excited to watch it. I'm excited to watch anything, though. But, you know, even if UFCs run every week, this is a good card by, by standards. So um, I'm looking forward to tonight. I'm going to take a bet on the main event of the evening. I think it's a ballsy bet. I think this fight could go either way. It's a close fight. I wish it was going to be Khabib versus Ferguson. That was the fight we've been waiting for, but that one's been canceled five times now. I mean, that's like crazy. I can't believe that. Um, you know, when it finally looked like it was going to happen, a pandemic ruined it. Like, that fight's just cursed. It's not meant to happen, I guess. But uh, we have Gage G versus um, Ferguson tonight, and I'm looking forward to that one. I think Justin Gage G is... Uh, he has a chance to win, a big chance to win. Uh, we all know how good Ferguson is. Uh, we know how dangerous he is. We know how awkward he is. And we know he, he can submit guys like like no big deal. Um, but Gates, he's a bit of a tough opponent for him because Justin's going to come out flying. He's not going to start slow. He's going to come out and he's going to land shots. Ferguson's shown that he's hittable before. Um, but the question is whether Ferguson will be able to survive that or not. Gates G's ha didn't have much time to practice, or sort of practice, train for the fight when it was originally planned for April 18th. But now that it's been extended for three weeks, he did have a bit more of a training camp. So he's going to be in better shape than he would have been three weeks ago. That being said, he won't be in the same shape that Ferguson's in. So the longer the fight goes, the more of a benefit it serves to Tony Ferguson. Uh, and the longer it goes, the more likely Ferguson wins by submission. That's my belief. However... For a death shot bet, to make it interesting, and I do believe this is going to happen tonight, I believe that Justin Gaethje is going to knock out Tony Ferguson, and I think he's going to do it in the first or the second round. I think he's going to catch him, and I think he's going to put the pressure on because he knows he can't let this fight go long. The longer it goes, it favors Ferguson. And if it goes past two rounds, Ferguson will win. But it's going to be a war until that happens. And I think, I think Justin's going to pull it off. So that's my death shot bet. I'm betting a death shot on that. And if I lose, I will do the death shot next week. And I'm going to probably do a pick for next week too. We'll see how that goes. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. Make sure that you subscribe. Make sure you check out last week's video. And for now, I'm going to put the other garden tour from a few weeks ago up here so you can check that out. I appreciate you all tuning in. Make sure you also check out my live broadcast. Check out UFC 249 tonight, and we'll see you soon. Thanks for checking out this garden tour.